On hearing these words of Brahma, the excellent sage remembered Shiva with a delighted heart and spoke joyfully. Narada said, O Brahma, the fortunate disciple of Vishnu, O intelligent one, you have narrated the wonderful divine sports of the moon-crested Lord. After Kama had married and gone to his residence, when all of you, you the Creator, Daksha and the Mental Sons, had all gone to your respective abodes, where did Sandhya, the daughter of Brahma and the mother of the Pitris, go? What did she do? Who married her? Please tell me all about it, and particularly the account related to Sandhya. Sutta said, On hearing these words of his intelligent son, Brahma, who knew the real situation, remembered Shiva and said, O oh sage, listen to the auspicious story of Sandhya, on hearing which ladies do always become chaste. That Sandhya was my daughter, mentally created by me formerly. She performed a penance, cast off her body, and was reborn as Arundhati. She was born as the intelligent daughter of the excellent sage Medhatiti, performed sacred rites at the bidding of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, and chose as her husband the noble-souled Vasishta of praiseworthy rites. She, of auspicious countenance, became the foremost of chaste ladies and deserved honor and respect from everyone. Narada inquired, How did she perform penance? Why and where? How did she cast off her body and become the daughter of Medhatiti? What did the deities Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva command her to do? And how did she choose the noble-souled Vasishta of praiseworthy rites as her husband? I am eager to hear all these things. O oh, Grandfather, tell me in detail the story of Sandhya precisely. Brahma said, Formerly on seeing Sandhya, my daughter, I cherished a love for her, which, being afraid of Shiva, I forsook. Sandhya's mind, too, was shaken on being stirred by Kama's arrows. The same had happened with the mind of the noble-souled sages who had so far curbed their minds. She had heard the words of Shiva to me couched in mocking terms. She had realized that her mental aberration in regard to the sages was beyond decency. She had seen the attitude of Kama culminating in the delusion of the sages frequently. Hence, Sandhya was excessively distressed with respect to her marriage. O oh, sage, then I cursed Kama. Shiva left the place, and I too disappeared. Thus her support was lost. So, O oh, excellent sage, Sandhya became furious. Then my daughter considered all these things and meditated. Meditating on the recent events, she, of great fortitude, mused what benefited the situation. Sandhya thought, Seeing me as a lady in the prime of my youth, even at my nativity, my father, prompted by Kama, cherished a lustful desire for me. The minds of the sages, the mental sons, reputed to be pure in mind, on seeing me became lustful, breaking the conventions. My mind, too, was excessively stirred up by the wicked Kama, as a result of which, on seeing those sages, it, too, became excessively shaken. Of course, Kama reaped the fruits of his sinful misdeeds, for Brahma became angry and cursed him in the presence of Shiva. I, too, shall have to reap the fruits of my sin. I have committed a great sin. I wish to have a means for making amends. Directly perceiving that I too had lustful feelings, the brothers and my father had a similar desire. Hence, I am the worst sinner. I too had the unconventional lustful feelings on seeing them, towards my own father and brothers, as towards a husband. I shall perform expiatory rites myself for my sin. Following the Vedic injunctions, I shall consign myself to the fire. 
but I shall set up the new limits in the world. No person shall be so lustful at the time of birth. For this purpose I shall perform a severe penance. Then I shall establish the new limits, and afterwards I shall abandon this life. No purpose will be served with this body for which love was cherished by my father and brothers. This body cannot be the means for achieving merit, for it was through this body that lustful feelings were generated in my father and brothers. Brahma said, Thinking thus in her mind, Sandhya went to the mountain Chandrabhaga, from which the river Chandrabhaga flows. On coming to know that she had gone to the mountain, I, Brahma, told my son Vasishta, the omniscient of purified mind due to penance, who had acquired spiritual knowledge, who was seated near me, and who had mastered the Vedas and the Vedangas. O son Vasishta, approach Sandhya, my daughter of great fortitude. She is desirous of performing a penance. Initiate her duly in the procedure of that. O great sage, formerly seeing you all and me as her lovers, and realizing her own lustful feelings, she had blushed. Though not expressed and though not personified, your action then is considered by her as her first death. Now she wishes to put an end to her life. Among those who observe limits and conventions, she wants to lay down a limitation. The chaste lady has gone to the mountain Chandrabhaga for performing the penance. She does not know the procedure of performing a penance. Oh dear, see that she realizes her desire by means of your instructions. O oh sage, abandon this form of yours. Disguise yourself and approach her to demonstrate the mode of penance. You shall assume another form, lest she should be embarrassed as before on seeing your natural form and features. O Narda, Vasishta was thus ordered by me out of pity. The sage too told me, so be it, and approached Sandhya. Vasishta saw the celestial lake full of ganas and resembling the Manasa lake. He saw Sandhya too on its bank. With her seated on its bank, the lake, full of splendid lotuses, appeared like the sky in the dusk with the moon rising and the stars twinkling. On seeing her there, full of noble feelings, the sage eagerly looked at the lake called Brihalohita. From the ridges of that big mountain, which appeared like a big fort wall, the river Chandrabhaga rose and flowed toward the southern sea. The sage saw that too. That river breaks the western wing of the mountain Chandrabhaga, even as Ganga of the mountain Himalaya, and flows toward the sea. Seeing Sandhya on the bank of the lake Brihalohita on that mountain Chandrabhaga, Vasishta asked her respectfully. Vasishta said, O oh good lady, why have you come to this mountain devoid of men? Whose daughter are you? What is it that you intend to do? I wish to know this, if it is not a secret. How is it that your face resembling the full moon is expressionless and inactive? On hearing the words of the noble-souled Vasishta and seeing him blazing like fire, shining like Brahmacharya personified, Sandhya bowed to the sage wearing matted hair and spoke to him respectfully. O oh, fearless sage, know that the purpose for which I came to this mountain has already been achieved, or rather will be achieved by your very sight. O oh, sage, I came to this mountain devoid of men to perform penance. I am the daughter of Brahma and am known as Sandhya. If it be proper and not inconvenient for you, please instruct me. This is what I expect of you. There is nothing to be kept secret in this. Without knowing the procedure of penance, I have come to this penance grove. Due to this worry, I am perplexed, and my heart trembles. On hearing her words, Vasishta, the most excellent among the knowers of Brahman, well versed in every rite, did not ask anything further. 
After remembering Shiva favorably disposed to the devotees, he addressed the lady who had controlled herself and was preparing for the penance. He who is the supreme brilliance, he who is the greatest authority, he who is the worthiest of worship, let that Shiva be meditated upon. Worship him who is the most excellent of all beings, the sole first cause of all the worlds, and the principal cause of virtue, wealth, love, and salvation. O lady, worship Lord Shiva, the Lord of all devas, with the following mantra. By that, certainly you will achieve everything. Aum Nama Shankaraya Aum Aum Obeisance to Shiva Aum With this mantra, the penance is pervaded. The whole penance begins with silence. I shall explain it. Listen. The ceremonial bath shall be taken silently. The worship of Shiva shall be performed silently. The food taken shall consist solely of water in the first and second Shashtakalas. A period of one-sixth of the day equals four hours. On the third Shashtakala, you shall observe complete fast without even taking water. This shall continue till the conclusion of the penance. The rites shall be performed at the end of each Shashtakala. This is called the penance of silence. It yields all the benefits of celibate life. O lady, it confers all cherished desires. True, it is certainly true. Thinking thus in your mind, O lady, you meditate on Shiva. If he is pleased, he will confer on you all you wish ere long. Vasishta then sat and explained to Sandhya the rites of the penance. The sage then vanished from the scene.